Um, so in terms of agenda, real quick review. Um, so we've, we're, we're done with welcome remarks. We'll spend maybe 10 seconds on, on who is intricity, uh, and then we'll, we'll launch into the five type, uh, five top, uh, data science KPIs for marketing and sales. And as I said, if you have questions, do, uh, enter them into the chat window so Jared can, uh, bring those up at the end of the presentation. Those of you that will be viewing this, um, recording, uh, certainly if there are questions, uh, feel free to reach out uh, directly to Jared. So Intricity is headquartered in New York City um, with uh, 12 locations across the U.S. Uh, and as you can see, contact information is below. Um, and without spending too much time on, on describing who we are, uh, we are an organization that helps uh, companies such as yours simplify complexity. Uh, and we do that by being your data science team. So we have folks that are on staff that work uh, with organizations of various sizes and help them find value um, in the data that they already collect. Those of you that are on the phone, um, typically what we see uh, across our customers is uh, lots of places where data lives. And so if you have SAP as your enterprise resource planning system, if you have Oracle, JD Edwards, Microsoft Dynamics, Infor, there are many others that we currently support. Uh, we see a lot of uh, organizations who are very mature uh, in their ways of collecting data, collecting transactional data. And so we find those transactions living in these systems. We also see many organizations who have um, adopted Salesforce, a CRM-based technology, to capture interactions uh, with their customers. So our sales teams are spending most of their time in Salesforce capturing interactions with, with our customers. And of course, we have direct integrations with SAP, with Oracle, with Microsoft Dynamics and Infor, and um, definitely Salesforce. Although some of our customers are using uh, Microsoft CRM, some of our customers are using Sugar CRM, so it doesn't really matter which CRM system you use. Um, this conversation is relevant to all of those uh, sources and, and ultimately what we would call us targets. Further, we see many organizations who have this alphabet soup in terms of marketing data. And so the question is, where does marketing data live today? Um, exec target, if you're a Salesforce customer, may be a, 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 a target for you for doing uh, marketing campaigns. Uh, it may be Marketo, it may be Adobe, it may be HubSpot. Uh, so we support many of these systems and, and are able to inject additional KPIs so that you can do segmentation, so that you can understand how your customers, uh, who, who to target and how to target those, those customers. One thing is for sure, and that is we have lots and lots of data. That data is coming in, and sometimes people call it big data, sometimes they call it transactional data. Uh, there's lots of uh, acronyms in, 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 in our world. Uh, but what's important is most organizations have no lack of data. And so the challenge is, what do you do with it? Um, many on, on the phone may have business intelligence tools such as Cognos and MicroStrategy and Business Objects and Tableau, and so they're trying to deal with um, this lots of data in many different different ways. The challenge is most of those ways are very different from data science, and, and we'll talk about what, what data science is. And so as we said, we are your data science team. And so the capabilities that are missing in many organizations that we work with are augmented by uh, the folks who are um, available to you from, from Intricity. And so what is data science? And how is data science different from business intelligence? And how is it different from those types of things that we've done uh, or are doing today? If you look at your marketing campaigns today, if you look at your sales reporting today, much of it looks to see what happened, um, how many emails were opened, how many uh, sales have we closed. And although those are important KPIs and businesses rely on them today, that's not what data science provides to us. Data science differs from business intelligence, for example. Um, by the fact that it has uh, a capability of providing predictive uh, answers. 
And so the question of who will buy uh, based on previous behavior and based on some segmentation work that we've done is one of the questions that data science is able to answer. Not what have they purchased in the past, but what will they purchase in the future? Uh, we look to data science to be able to find uh, relationships in data that are very difficult to see if we're purely looking at transactions. And so data science allows us to do uh, regression analysis, allows us to do deep learning. And all of this is done on the Intricity platform. So we have uh, all of the tools already built to be able to take the data from those data sources, from that lots of data, uh, to be able to bring uh, data science expertise uh, to predict what the behavior will be. And since today we're focused on sales and marketing, we'll focus primarily on those five KPIs around sales and marketing. And so the first KPI that we'll talk about is the predictive customer lifetime value. Many of our customers are very interested in, in calculating customer lifetime value, but many of them do it using uh, methods that were in place for the last 30 years. And so the mechanism that we typically see in those organizations that have approached the CLV question is that they come in and they say, okay, what is my average recurring revenue per customer? And so they look at their book of business and they say, we've got 10 million customers. We will calculate what our average uh, recurring revenue is for that customer. And we'll also look at the systems that we currently have and we'll look and see how many of those customers have been with us. How long does a customer usually stay with us? Is it five years? Is it six years? And then they say customer lifetime value is the average revenue multiplied by the average customer lifetime value. But as you know, not all of your customers are average. Many of your customers are very different. And some who are average today may become superstars tomorrow. And so being able to calculate predictive customer lifetime value is dramatically different than the approach that most organizations uh, use today. Who should we market to? And so the marketing costs money. Is marketing effective? How much, how effective is marketing? Uh, our, uh, how healthy our, uh, is our customer loyalty? Um, do our customers come back to us? Who is thinking of buying? Who do we expect to buy? And who would gain from um, a marketing effort? Uh, and so as an example, if we have a budget, a marketing budget of um, $100,000, and we'd like to offer coupons, uh, whether it be digital coupons or otherwise, we'd like to offer some, something, uh, some sort of an offer. We'd like to extend an offer to our customers to sign up for a service or to uh, upgrade uh, service, and we may offer them specific discounts. We may be doing that uh, to uh, those customers who are going to purchase anyway. And so again, if we are looking to maximize our marketing spend, it would be much, much better if we were able to understand um, who do we make that investment to. The other uh, typical question that we have um, is, I have a sales organization of 100 people. I have a sales organization of 20 people. I have a sales organization of 5,000 people. How do I help my sales uh, team focus their efforts so that they're going after those opportunities that are most likely to turn into a sale. And so if you're looking at the CLV measure as a mechanism to understand which customers are uh, have a higher customer lifetime value, you have an opportunity to, at the customer level, not generically on an average, but on a specific customer, score that customer and use that KPI score to prioritize uh, your activities, to prioritize your marketing activities, and certainly to prioritize your uh, sales activities as well. And so what we're looking at, we're looking at lifetime value, we're looking at cost uh, of customer acquisition, we're looking at churn. So if we are predicting, and, and the predictive model tells us that uh, we're expecting these customers to buy this much from us in the next five weeks, um, and they don't. That's a sign, that's an opportunity for us to reach out and perhaps 
act to retain the customer or find out if there is a if there is a reason why that customer has not purchased from us and so intricity has um, uh, using data science uh, has the ability to calculate KPI number one, the predictive customer lifetime value, and then make that uh, available to you in your CRM, such as Salesforce, or in your marketing pl platform, such as ExecTarget, so that you can use those measures to target those specific customers. And so um, we, we look, uh, as we'll look at the next KPIs, uh, obviously these KPIs work in concert. But the most important thing that we have in this predictive KPI is the ability to be laser focused on which customers are our potential best targets. Uh, it's the old Pareto rule, 80% uh, of our sales will come from top 20% of our customers. But it's not enough to simply look at what did they purchase last quarter, what did they purchase last month to be able to say what they will purchase in, in the future. And so KPI number one, the keyword here, the data science keyword here is predictive, predictive customer lifetime value. Uh, and if you don't remember any of the other KPI, four KPIs we'll talk about, uh, this certainly is a very, very important one because many of our marketing activities and our sales activities are built around our ability to understand customers at the customer level. Again, not generically across many customers, but specifically to an individual that we're looking uh, or individuals we're looking to target. And so this is an example from a, um, uh, a briefing book uh, that predicts future purchases. And so what we have here is a heat map that shows us which customers in the dark blue are not likely to buy from us. And then we have this really dark red area towards the bottom that shows us which customers are more likely to buy. What's important to understand here is that the graphic itself, while is interesting, what's more important is the data behind it. And so our predictive customer lifetime value KPI is a calculation that is generated on a customer by customer basis. And you can ask of this KPI um, for the next T periods. And a period can be five days, it can be five months, it could be a year. Uh, based on customers' behavior, what do I anticipate their purchases to be in the next T periods? So very, very powerful uh, indicator. And so here, this was an equipment manufacturer, and we did um, we ran analytics for them just to show whether the data was uh, and the modeling was accurate and how accurate it was. But as we look at this, the model is the line in green, and those were the predictions that the model made. Um, and this is just an example. Um, and, and we looked to see over a period of time how accurate is this model. And so far, the work that we've done, we're seeing anywhere from 95 to 98% accuracy. Uh, and it's very, very exciting. And so again, there is nothing, no software required to install. There is nothing that the organization needs to do. Um, we collect the right amount of data and then we provide, as we'll talk about, the briefing book and the data that could be used in your CRM system. And so again, what we're looking at is the ability to uh, predict frequency of repeat transactions. What will the future transactions be? Not just what the customer did in the past, which is what most uh, of, of your organizations are today able to do. Data science adds the ability to show what will happen in the future. And so we move on to KPI number two. Um, many of you have um, read about the uh, net influencer score, and many of your organizations today are doing the customer surveys to understand, uh, will our customers love us, uh, do they love us, and will they come back? Again, um, it's very subjective because th that score is calculated based on feedback from, from users, and while it's a helpful indicator, it requires um, a significant expense to go out and try to uh, um, calculate the scores, get the surveys done, tabulate the results, and then validate the results. 
But what's important today is you're already collecting much more data than, than is required for the net uh, predictive influencer score. And so what we're able to do with KPI number two is, again, use data science, use the interactions with our customers based on click rate, um, how many emails have they opened, how many campaigns have they responded to, um, and we look at their um, influence score as um, an ability to also understand what does the network look like? What's the health of the network? Um, many of our customers struggle with being able to understand the hierarchy uh, and looking at that hierarchy becomes very, very important. And so what we have the ability to do, uh, and we use technology uh, called a graph database, uh, to create a, um, an interactive um, website that you can come in directly from Salesforce or through your other CRM, uh, click on a particular individual, and then see what that individual's network looks like. Who are our Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 influencers based on transactional behavior, based, based on their interactions on, on our websites? And so we begin to form clusters. We're looking to understand what our network looks like and what our clusters look like. Um, and again, this is not um, this is using data science tools, tools that you have Google and Yahoo using today. Uh, but these are tools that are now available to you. Uh, and again, there is no software. All we need is is the data to be able to generate these 